it's moments like these that I just think, wow, we could be doing anything else. And yeah, we're looking at pointy toe free. Hello, dear listeners, and welcome back to an unexpected episode, potentially, we don't even know if we're going to release this, to be honest, of What A Barb, A Pollen Podcast. At the moment, I'm joined with my lovely Lecky on a bit of, I've just grabbed you on a call, haven't I, Lec? I was like, get on a Zoom. (laughs) And so, if we do end up releasing this mini episode, basically, at the weekend, we all sat down and recorded our next episode, which is going to be a QA, and a which is going to be released this weekend, hopefully. And part of the episode was we were chatting about the new clips, as everybody is doing at the moment, right, Lec? Yeah. And so we were planning on releasing that this weekend. And then because we are like this 100% of the time, whether we're recording the podcast or not, we were chatting about some things. (laughs) And something came up where I was like, Lecky, can we just get on a call and have a look at something and figure something out? To contextualize, Mm -hmm. if you've been following our social media, you will know (laughs) that we've been very interested. And if you've listened to our last episode, you'll know that we've been very interested in finding some topiary. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Some pointy topiary. Some pointy topiary, some pointy tree, a pointy tree behind Colin in the clip that we just got last week. And we are still on the search. There is a reward. I don't know what the reward is. Whatever the reward is, maybe a nice bonsai? I don't know. But that goes to several of our listeners who reached out to us and led us back to 208. Well, we will get to it. And instead of adding it to our Q&A episode, we're going to add it now as a little midweek bonus. And mm-hmm. at the end, me and Lecky are going to introduce a new conversation that we've been having today where like mm-hmm. now we, we said something and I'm looking at the scene in a completely different way. And it's kind of blowing my mind a little bit. So listen to, you know, what we said earlier in the episode Mm -hmm. and what we say at the end of the episode and let us know (laughs) what you think, what your opinion is. Which side of the coin you think? Because we change our minds massively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Topiary truthers, please weigh in. So we're going to pass you over to our past selves. Veg and beans are there too. So go say hi to them and we're going to have a little discussion. Also, I bought a new microphone and then fucked up the recording and didn't record through a microphone. So my audio quality is pretty shit. I'm sorry. But... (laughs) We'll send you back now. Go have a lovely time. Off you go. Since we're on the topic of a couple of certain clips, how are we thinking? We've had a few days with it. Our episode the other day was very much in the moment on very little sleep. I mean, there's so many theories going around. Have you got any new thoughts about it? What are we thinking? Mm-hmm. First of all, shall we do Moonlight Pollen, as Lecky was mentioning? Now, Lecky, last night we were sending some voice memos. I was making corkboard trying to figure this little thing out. I think I did figure it out. With <laughs> Moonlight Pollen, I'm going to be the first one to say... I honestly don't fucking know. I think I figured it out. And since Nicola posted that thing on Instagram stories, she psyched me out. (laughs) Lecky, okay then. I think what we were struggling with with Moonlight Pollen is we'd originally thought that Moonlight Pollen was going to be at the end of episode two. It was like the, you know, the big crescendo. I still think it is. But Lecky, we've had some new information. Yeah. Some new theories. Yeah. Some new eyes. Can you take us through the updates of Moonlight Pollen? Yes. So one of our listeners reached out to us and she realized, or she suspects, but I'm pretty sure she's right. We kind of looked at this picture closely. But we think that the unicolon waistcoat that's covered with all the, the animals, that Colin is wearing the same waistcoat in Moonlight Pollen. If you zoom in on his collar, <laughs> and we have. there's kind of like this distinctive F-shaped stitch, as well as on his waistcoat, there's like a monkey and he has one of his hands on his head. And you can kind of see just the tippity top of the monkey's head with like the hand on top of the head in the very, very corner, like where his collar is. So um, we think he's wearing the same waistcoat, which suggests that those two scenes take place on the same day. Unless he's being a sustainable king. Huge shout out to that listener because that is the attention to detail. I disagree. <gasps> you don't think it's the same waistcoat? I think it's the same waistcoat, but I think this is an episode one. I mean, like Pollen's episode two. It's an episode two? Yeah. All right, well, then we're going to just listen to my crack theory that's highly inaccurate anyway. Go for it. <laughs> I'm fine with being wrong, don't worry. It's all fucking wrong. Yeah. As Nick says, say something yeah. that'll make her laugh. This is something that'll make her laugh because I was thinking about it anyway. I think that the ball scene happens at the end of episode one, but then the him being all untied and shit like that is from episode two. I think Lady Whistledown wrote something overnight and then he saw it. And then he was like, wait, how does she know that that happened? That only happened between me and so-and-so. Ooh, I like the idea that she was going to write something that he's like, hang on a minute, only the two of us would know that. That's actually yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that the Moonlight one takes place after the Unicolon picture just because his hair looks more disheveled, even yeah. though his, his waistcoat is torn open. I think he's maybe just come down to breakfast and that's usually when like the issue of Lady Whistledown comes. So I think yeah. like mm-hmm. that kind of predates like that spiral that he goes on at the end of the episode where he confronts Penn and they have this conversation 
conversation. Yeah, it could be. Because there's like, you can see the curl that then gets yeah. disheveled. Yeah. yeah. I also personally think it's a confrontation between the two, not her revealing she's Lady Whistledown. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Originally, I thought it could be like him realizing what he'd said to her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I personally think yeah. that happens in episode one. I think it'd be too late to happen in episode two. Yeah, maybe. Or unless like she doesn't say anything and then they go to this ball and she makes a comment and then he realizes why all this time she's been like been angry with him yeah yeah like maybe he's sensed that there's something underlying it yeah so i guess it could happen in episode two i personally think that's a little bit too late mm. <laughs> which is funny because episode two <laughs> yeah literally episode <laughs> one and two it's like we're absolutely bamboozled by the amount that's gonna that's gonna happen yeah yeah episode two especially lecky you've been trying to piece the timeline together a little bit because obviously we have ostily mm-hmm. right yeah. and the key part of ostily is that his hand is cut it's the bandage right yeah but if ostily is to come before unicolin and to come before moonlight pollen then how do we think that that could happen like how quick is his hand gonna heal i think you had a bit of a theory didn't you yeah i do i think that cullen may injure his hand in one of the lessons so here here's what i think for the timeline i think that early in the episode we're going to see the market scene and that first lesson that we got the clip from I think that might be their very first lesson Mm. and then I think after that we may see a montage of further lessons or them practicing on suitors leading to the Osterly ball but before the Osterly ball I think there'll be like a comic beat in that montage where we see him cutting his hand. Mm. Veg in our recording we had to cut a lot of it out the other day but In our recording, you actually had a really interesting theory about how the journal scene might go down because Mm -hmm. book readers will know that. Book readers and Dean's herself has never read the book. (laughs) Book readers and those who have absorbed it by osmosis and the collective hive mind will know that that scene in the book reads with anger. And Mm -hmm. it's like a, it's an awkward moment that then he has to apologize for. But you had a bit of an idea about how they could really leading on from the clip that we saw in that moment between them, they could maybe invert that and make that a really comedic scene. And we all really loved it. Yeah. So I thought instead of it being sort of like part of the journal scene and all the kind of tensions and stuff that happens there even though we kind of we're vaguely into the idea of writer colin at least vaguely joking writer colin (laughs) great love it but we don't like obviously that he gets angry so i thought what i initially thought was maybe happening in the first clip was that maybe they'd had an awkward moment and he was sort of distracted by staring at Penn and like cut himself. (laughs) Because he was so lost in the moment. (laughs) He was like squeezing it. Yeah. And that's what I thought when when we had like 0.2 second clip of them. That leak. Yeah, the leak. That was sort of seemed like they were looking down or something. Obviously it turns out they were just getting a little bit of lemonade, but I think something like that could be a bit more rom-com and cutesy. I like this idea. And then she's like, oh my God, you're bleeding everywhere. And he's like, I didn't even notice. Yes. I thought he could maybe be so caught up in a moment that he like grips a letter opener Uh in his hand and cuts his hand Uh and doesn't notice until Penn points out the blood or something. Since we're talking about it, I would love to give my flowers to Veg because Veg was the first one to be like, oh, maybe this is a one of the lesson scenes when we were originally watching the clips and I was like I said oh I was right I think it's this but it was really veg veg was the correct one out of all of us (laughs) what a retraction (laughs) and I was given a lovely photoshopped bouquet of vegetables Hey, you know, that wasn't photoshopped. That was an actual bouquet of vegetables. Oh, oh my god! I made a photoshopped bouquet of baked potatoes beans. for you, beans. Yeah, with beans. Yeah. So. Uh, but Lucky, to return back to... I have yet to get a bouquet. You're right. You need to earn your bouquet. <laughs> <laughs> earn it and then I'll send you a bouquet. Um, so Lucky, to jump back into the timeline then, so you said... So in episode two, I think we'll start off with the market scene and then we'll have that first mm-hmm. lesson. And then I think there may be like a montage of further lessons and, you know, her practicing her skills on suitors with varying degrees of success. Mm-hmm. And I think that maybe the scene where he cuts his hand will be in that montage. And then the next time they go to the ball, we'll see the bandage on Mm. his hand. But I do think that maybe like her practicing these lessons and the episode itself may take place over the course of a couple days or maybe even weeks because the timeline doesn't necessarily have to be one day, Mm -hmm. especially if they're including a montage to show the passage of time. So I think before the end of the episode, before that moonlight pollen moment and in that unicolon scene, I think maybe his hand would have healed by then is how I'm getting around the bandage theory because they could have between Osterley yeah. and Unicorn yeah. they could have another montage where we suspected that maybe the maybe the first montage is super super innocent and like friendly and like 
they just have tiny mm. moments but maybe the yeah. second montage is a little bit more charged we're seeing him be like oh. yeah so it's setting it's setting him up yeah specifically i think there will be like a lesson where pen and colin have a significant yeah. moment to the point where it maybe scares pen into publishing something that's kind of negative about her or touches on what he said at the Featherington mm -hmm. Ball or maybe at that time they're starting to attract attention because they're spending oh. so much time together mm -hmm. so she tries to refute yeah. that especially if she's maybe met Devlin by uh -huh. then or knows that there are suitors that are starting to pay attention to her that she might try to separate from him and kind of remind him that he doesn't want yeah. her and remind herself that there's no chance that they can be together by finally publishing about the Featherington Ball or making some offhand remark about like oh Lady Whistledown makes a scathing remark about how they would never end up together ever in Penelope's wildest dreams <gasps> you know something really scathing i will say i do like that theory yeah and then on top of that because if i think that's what you were getting to then that he would read that get annoyed go to the bar the bar <laughs> i mean probably probably <laughs> he would probably go see will go to the ball and be like he would he'd be worried that pen read that yeah touching on what we said at christmas too we think in that unicolon picture that maybe colin is talking to antony and mm -hmm. benedict so it might be even that he comes mm -hmm. down for mm -hmm. breakfast they show him the lady whistle down issue he's like really pissed off and if maybe she doesn't like directly say what he mm -hmm. said at the featherington ball but maybe one of them reminds him or says like oh don't, you don't remember like oh, yeah because antony saw pen walking away right yeah either antony remarks that he saw pen or maybe they've heard through the grapevine that this happened and colin is like oh fuck i'd never i didn't even know that happened i was drunk and penelope hasn't told me so like later that evening he's determined to talk to her and he seeks her out and they have th this moment and i think that penelope looks scared because she <sighs> I think that maybe they have a conversation before this scene, before he approaches mm -hmm. her, where he tries to either refute the idea yeah. that he would never court her, and she's scared that her plan may fall apart, and she's not ready to trust him and like have her heart broken. Mm -hmm. He might also be annoyed. He might be like, "Why didn't you tell me straight away that so I could fix this? Why yeah. did you let this fester?" Yeah, and I think she would be scared of letting her feelings mm -hmm. show, like yeah. and explain why she didn't tell him originally because it's so much tied to her heart yeah. that hurt. So I feel like maybe that's why she's scared in this moment. Yeah. But we were also talking about how in the moonlight still that comes after this, Penn looks much more calm. Mm. So I think that in this scene, there's a moment where A, Colin realizes that he has feelings yeah. for Penelope. B, that Penelope may have feelings for him because he's really good at reading people. I think this is the moment where he starts to read Ooh. her, but I think he realizes that she's scared because she's visibly scared. I'm probably wrong. I'll say that. But I think that maybe he realizes that she's so scared that he finally backs off and he agrees to go along with the plan again he kind of like says I'm on board with the plan and that kind of calms yeah. Penelope but I think this is the start of chaos Colin and this will trigger in episode three him pursuing her maybe without her even realizing it and trying to win her back from Deblin and trying to get her to give up this plan and then episode four when it looks like she is going to marry Deblin and the plan is falling apart or his plan to win her is falling apart because her plan to marry someone else is succeeding mm -hmm. then we'll see all like that drama ramp up so that's my idea of the timeline oh for that <laughs> I need some time to get okay with that because I don't want Colin to feel like I <laughs> I don't want Colin to ever know that she loved I don't know you know what I mean I don't want her to be embarrassed he has to find out at some point the thing is is like Colin reads people well but he never reads pen well he needs to start though but at this point they've spent so much time together in their lessons alone one on one yeah she's still hiding herself from him in a way as well I do agree I think that she she's going to publish something because I think mm -hmm. they're going to reference back to episode 8 when she's looking around and seeing the, the Lord squad like laughing or like talking about them and mm -hmm. she's going to see that yeah. happen again she's mm -hmm. going to see them looking at her and then she's going to post something and be like remember our stations yeah well this is what yeah. I was about to say because it links back to Lecky what you were saying earlier you said that she might write something because if they're spending a lot more time together at the balls which we've seen in Ostley they're very very physically close next to each other yeah. then surely people are going to start noticing and like he's hanging mm. around with her a lot or maybe Penn worried that they're going to start noticing and she's going to have to address it in some way because you don't want a rumour like that getting out and also it's going to hurt her chances with other people exactly and so the whistle down might say something very jokingly like playing it down being like oh yeah I know that these two have been seen together but come on readers like and this is very scathing to how she was in the books like come on readers you know, we know that there's nothing going on. As we all know, he said it himself that he'd never dream of calling her. Yeah. So of mm -hmm. course nothing's going yeah. on. 
I think she'll reference it back, maybe a little bit nicer. And she goes, but as you know, a little birdie at the Featherington Ball last year heard young Mr. Bridgerton say that he was not interested in Penelope. Yeah. So no one panic because it's never going to happen. Yeah. That's a good way to reference the past conflict without Mm -hmm. having to, Mm -hmm. like, because time has passed. So we're not still in that moment of like, she's just going to publish it now, but it's a way to reference the conflict. Yeah. And I also think it would compel him to seek her out. And I think that there has to be a reason for her to look so scared. And initially I thought maybe she let it slip, but I think he finds out maybe through Lady Whistledown, but she doesn't realize that those aren't his true feelings. Mm -hmm. And that's what scares her because she's scared that she can't trust them. And then maybe at the ball, she has to act the part, right? So Mm -hmm. she ignores him. She doesn't like accept a dance from him. Maybe she's spending more time with Devlin. Maybe she's actively yeah. avoiding him because she has to act the part. If she doesn't want them to suspect that she's Lady Whistledown, she can't be unsurprised by that, you know? Maybe she doesn't even go to a ball that night or something like that to just kind of like take a step back. I don't know. Well, just because we've received a lot yeah. of comments about this and there's been a lot of discussion that this might not be a ball because of their attire, which mm-hmm. we were also going to get into because Colin is wearing like a corduroy-esque jacket and Penn's hair is down and it looks like intimate. It doesn't necessarily look like a ball updo or like it, her hair isn't pinned back like it normally is at balls. So some people are saying this may not be a ball after all. Maybe it's like a social gathering with the ton. Could be a soiree. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say that Penn has worn her hair down. Well, she's like worn it very loose before, but the problem is it's bit like if yeah. you think to Vauxhall, a little bit was pulled up, but the rest of it fell down her back. It's just because it was so heavily curled. It looks very different visually yeah. and it's very, very soft and loose and romantic but obviously yeah. you get the added complication of Colin's attire being scruffy to use Anthony's words undoubtedly and if we see his hair is very mm-hmm. undone like he earlier I think it was a misspeak actually you were like maybe you Colin sees that is really pissed off then he goes to a bar and you're like oh no he's going to a bar that was beans but yeah <laughs> Bean, sorry, Beans, he said that. But maybe that he like spends the day kind of sulking and being like, oh my God. Yeah. Or maybe he tries to see Penn and can't. Yeah. And maybe he he doesn't go to the ball because he's so upset and he's like, I can't go and like, I don't know. Maybe there's just, maybe he doesn't go to the ball straight away and maybe he tries to see her afterwards and he's like a mess. I agree that this could potentially be a ball look just because we don't have an idea of what all of her ball looks look like yet. They could go even more modern and let her wear her hair down like this to a ball. We don't know. But some people think it might be more intimate, mm-hmm. in which case it could take place after a ball or maybe there's not a ball that night, but he seeks her out anyway. To segue over to the drawing room scene then, any new thoughts about this? Veg and I, actually, we have, uh, I recorded it, our reaction as we were trying to explain it, but Veg and I were having a chat about the drawing room scene earlier and we both had fixed on the exact same thing. Like you said it and I was like, I've been thinking this the whole time too. So we talk about him reacting to what she says about his eyes and stuff. But right at the start of the clip, before Penn says anything, there's four to five seconds, four to five seconds of him staring at her anyway Mm -hmm, he's mm -hmm. just staring at her Mm -hmm. and what we love it is like he gives her that space to it's like very encouraging in the moment obviously he's just said like a prompt like Mm -hmm. you know give me a line and it's just such a safe space that he creates for her but what we were saying as well and it's kind of touched on what beans were saying earlier is at some point he's going to have to start twigging she might have feelings for him Mm -hmm. unless he's going to go down the whole unrequited love route of oh my god i'm in love with someone who doesn't love me which there's a tragic comedy to that but when we were looking at his reaction veg and i were talking about it if we think about Say, for example, the surely fervently loudly scene. Okay. That was a scene that in that moment, we as an audience know that when she says the lines, we know that she's building that up to say it to him and that that's a framing that she's giving. But because of how Colin's mindset is there and in season two as well, it goes straight over his head. As Jess Brownell said, there's yeah. only a couple of moments in season two where he even starts to get close to realizing it, like tiny fleeting yeah. moments where everything else, even when, and it's one of the frustrating things as an audience because they're always like, it's so obvious that she's in love with him. And she does say some things to him. Him, like when she's asking about his relationship status and stuff like that where you're like Colin oh my god and for whatever reason it just doesn't reach him whereas in this moment when they're in this scene Veg and I were saying that his reaction is to get extremely flustered and to go that was rather direct and it's almost like finally something has hit him because I think had this scene happened in season one or season two I think we'd be getting something where he was like yes that's a lovely thing to say yeah and like I think that would have gone straight over his head mm, over his into head. one of those really frustrating moments where you're like oh my god she's obviously talking about you but it's that slight 
slight change where he hits him in a slightly different way and he like gets flustered and he only looks at her that is this the change it's just such a different dynamic yeah he can only be oblivious for so long before he starts twigging that's true yeah, yeah. so i think that in that moonlight pollen moment is where he finally realizes that she has feelings for him or had feelings for mm-hmm. him but now he knows he has to like basically win her back and convince her that she can trust his feelings he also may fear that she's given up on him and that he needs to win her back well this is a really sad thing if he realizes that he's starting to have feelings for her but he thinks yeah. oh my god she did but i've lost that. i've broken yeah. that that's even sadder yes. than him being like mm-hmm. oh my god she's in love with you. it's like how do you come back from that okay this has nothing to do with anything but i'm just now realizing that <laughs> season <laughs> three might have the same plot line as my favorite movie strictly ballroom <laughs> <laughs> basically in strictly ballroom incredible movie i love that movie the stakes are not high in this movie at all which is why it's perfect so basically mm-hmm. this one lady is like i want to dance your steps they are ballroom dancers and he starts dancing different steps that aren't allowed in ballroom dancing and so he starts giving her lessons at the beginning of the lessons he's like you know like all these lessons like dancing like mm-hmm. you feel it but it's not real like those emotions aren't real and then how <laughs> Halfway through the movie, he's like, actually, I take that back because I like you. <laughs> but that's a lovely note because when we think about the compliment that she gives him, what's so beautiful in that moment is that it is, is so real for her. Yeah. That she's not deluding herself into like she's there to find a different husband, but her emotions are still very rooted in yeah. that truth. So, and what it's just an observation. It's not really like a point really, but what I loved about the line she said to him about his eyes was, Lecky, your favorite scene, 207. The thing that really strikes me in 207, you know, when they're walking down the staircase, it actually stresses me out because I'm like, Nick, please don't fall. But what I love about the way that Nicola has played it is if you watch Penelope's mm-hmm. case, we've talked a lot about her sexual awakening and how maybe she isn't quite there yet and how her love has is, is been more of like a romantic, mm-hmm. like a fairy tale-esque, is that if you watch mm-hmm. the way Penelope has loved Colin in season one and season two, she's always been drawn to his eyes. You catch it time and time again. I know. It's not like she's checking out his whole body or anything. She's always looking right into his yeah. eyes and it's always that scene that reminds me of it. Mm-hmm. And so it makes so much sense to me that in this moment, the first thing she can think of to compliment him is that his kindness, his soul is evident to her through his eyes. And it's such a gorgeous thing. A couple more notes on the drawing room. Yeah. There's been some chat about the shawl, whether it's a shawl in the background, whether it's a dress in the background. Like, you know, we were having some debates about this. What do you think, Lick? I mean, I'm still torn. I feel like it might be a dress just because it, to me, I could be wrong. It seems like there's multiple layers. Mm. Like there's like a tool layer and then there's kind of like a, a layer of like another fabric. Mm-hmm. But you think it's just a shawl that's draped over itself. I, I have to say, I really don't know. I think it's a shawl. And the reason I do is that, is it the loaded gun principle? Is that what you call it? Chekhov's gun? Yes, right. Yes. Oh my God, Veg, you absolute angel. Wikipedia tells me it's the narrative principle that states that every element in a story must be necessary and irrelevant elements should be removed. I'm just going to say that from Wikipedia because it's easier. And so it's the idea that if there's a gun in a scene, it needs to be used, right? Yeah, it's going to go off at some point. And it's like the portrait yeah. of Edmund and Violet. If that's going to be in the season, it needs to be used. It's going to go off at some point, Veg, exactly. I'm thinking that shawl mm-hmm. is so like interestingly framed and interestingly placed. I'm wondering if that's going to be the gun in the scene. And that we hear that Eloise and Francesca are walking into the scene or like walking close. I was wondering what might happen if he like hustles her out of the room really, really quickly and like gets her physically out of the room. But because they're in so much of a hurry, she leaves her shawl behind. Mm. And that's like the loaded gun that they find or someone finds it's like, whose shawl is this? Or maybe they know it's Penelope's and it's like an interesting, like what is going on? Or is this like the close call where they're going to have to relocate their lessons afterwards? Or it could be both. So I think it's more of a camera blur that we're seeing rather than Mm -hmm. tool being overlaid on the dress because you can kind of see it on Penn's arm too. Mm -hmm. I think it's a shawl because it looks very similar, like the color similar to her like whistle down shawl. If we're talking Chekhov's gun, I think that perhaps, maybe, Colin is just in town or something and sees Penn's shawl. Ooh, yeah, and yeah. It comes back later. Yeah, mm-hmm. and she comes back later, later. You know, mm-hmm. it's a it's a delayed bullet. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if we're speaking about foreshadowing, whether it's a shawl or a dress, maybe that uh, is a sign that we're getting that that scene on Violet's sofa where they have a steamy moment on that sofa later in the season. Ooh, like marking it. Is what I was thinking. But to just bring back Fran and Eloise for a second about them potentially finding it, we were able to listen to this audio more closely and it sounds like Eloise and Fran are chatting and Eloise says, I think I did them a great service. And Fran says, hush, unless you care to tell Mama. Mm -hmm. I think I did them a great service. 
But you can't tell me why. So I think that judging from Penn and Colin's concerned expressions at the end, that nobody really knows that they're meeting there and they don't want to be caught. Penn does not want to see Eloise. Yeah. I don't think that at that point, Colin may know about the conflict with Eloise, but I think also they should just not be alone together. Mm-hmm. So I also wonder if this, I think this is their first lesson. And I think because of this close call, they might start meeting more secretly, which may lead them to start meeting in Colin's room or yeah. Penn sneaking into the Bridgerton house because she knows how to mm-hmm. do that. So um, that was another thought I had about this scene. Risky little game. But also that, that callback could totally be too if he sees her coming in with the shawl. And then mm-hmm. he sees her running out with a shawl or whatever, or going into a printer's press or whatever the fuck. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. There could be a moment there where he starts to to catch on to the lady whistle down thing if he just sees that out of the corner of his eye. Okay, Lucky. So, listeners, if you're still with us, you'll have just heard the four of us having a chat about our different theories about both scenes. I think no one really knows at this point, so it's really been fun, and the fandom's having a great time piecing it all together. I have seen some amazing, like, timelines being compiled as everyone mm. tries to figure stuff out. Visual aids, diagrams, very impressive. And you've heard some of our earlier theories, but, Lucky, today, as you say, we've been captivated by the Chopuri trees. We've been so committed to trying to figure out where we're talking about the moonlight pollen scene, right? Right. So, that we have the Tudum still that we got back in yep. June, which we know is from 302. Right. That has been confirmed. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, recently, we have this clip that is believed to be from the same scene, again, of Moonlight Pollen. Right. So we can extrapolate that it's also from 302. Oddly, we've just been trying to figure out where the scene takes place because I think our main idea at the moment is it's maybe Basildon, but we can't quite pinpoint it down exactly, which has been really yeah. frustrating. But we'll tell you why we think it's Basildon. Yeah, and our listeners have been chipping in with their ideas too. So thank <laughs> you to everyone. It is truly a team effort at this point mm-hmm. as we are trying to grapple with it all but lucky we were looking at this right and what we were trying to figure out in the new clip that we've got there's a couple of like visual aids such as the hedge yes we've been trying to place yes so there's a pointy topiary and then there's an actual hedge or what seems like to be i'm sorry lucky can i just say can you believe that we're spending our evenings talking about pointy topiary (laughs) Topiary. hey if you listen to our last episode we said we would be going down the topiary spiral here's the topiary spiral so behind colin there's a pointy topiary a pointy tree Mm -hmm. and a hedge and then behind Penelope there's kind of like what looks like a stone wall and on the right of her there's kind of what looks like a window frame or a door frame potentially a very thin it's like white wood isn't it so like you say you can definitely see this sort of stone like a lintel or a framing around her that we've also been trying to locate and like you say on the other side it's almost maybe as if she's in a doorway or in a Mm -hmm. courtyard doorway with the door open okay so this is what we've been trying to pin down yeah this is the moment where Penelope looks very visible upset and Colin is moving towards her. Yes. So just to <laughs> set the scene, I spent most of last night looking at aerial footage and like YouTube videos of Bridgerton shooting locations, trying to find this pointy topiary. Mm-hmm. I, I literally spent so long doing it, I fell asleep briefly. <laughs> but then today, one of our listeners commented on one of our videos and said that she saw what looked to be a similar shrubbery, <laughs> she said. So <laughs> we're using lots of different words for <laughs> the greenery here. Horticulturalist we are not. She saw it in 208 at the Featherington Ball. So immediately... <laughs> the scene with Cantony at the end when with the fireworks. Yeah, within the scene with Cantony. So I pulled up the episode. I queued it up to the frame right before <laughs> Antony approaches Kate. And like in the frame right before the Cantony scene, there's a bunch of Tons people looking at a bunch of pointy trees. Like there's a bunch of <laughs> pointy topiary right behind them. And they're ringed in these yellow and white flowers that look yes. kind of similar to the flowers that are behind. Penelope Mm -hmm. in the clip that we just received. And Colin as well. There's some white and yellowish flowers around him too. So So I think they are fake trees and fake flowers Mm -hmm. that were planted there by production. Editor's note, I had not meant for this to be a pun. I meant to say that the production had placed them there. We also wanted to note that on the left side of the frame near Penelope, there's kind of this stone material, but weirdly the wall looks very thin. So that to me suggests that it also may be a fake wall. So lots of fake things here. Potentially. Mm -hmm. And we kind of had a suspicion that maybe this was Basildon because they were shooting at Basildon at the time. And Mm -hmm. it kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's Penelope's um, home. The exterior of the house is used for the Featherington home. So we went and looked at Basildon and Basildon does have hedges. They're just Mm -hmm. not as tall as the ones that we see in the moonlight clip. So I think it might also be a faux hedge. (laughs) Nothing is real. So I think it's all fake. Yeah, nothing is real. Could be a Basildon. We're not sure. But after finding out all of this. Well, we turned our attentions back to the stone, right? 
and the the little doorway. So like we were trying to figure out if we could locate exactly where she's standing. Right. What we'll say is in our heads, and I think yeah. quite a few people have thought that we have this still from to yeah. them where they're very leaned in close and she has this almost I've always like struggled to explain her expression in this because it's like there's like the old Penelope reverence with like this her almost or I don't know she's gazing up at him but it's not quite the wonderstruck gaze it's like I don't know it's, it's clearly they're in a moment right people have discussed whether this is a kiss moment or not but clearly they're caught up in a moment and he's leaning right down to her level right in her face and then obviously we thought so what is happening contextually once we have this clip this clip from the other day is that the whole scene plays out where the you have the clip where he's walking towards her and that transitions to the moment at Dum where they're super super close to each other and she's gazing up at him and it's interesting because she's very visibly distraught and upset and beforehand yeah. beforehand and then suddenly she's like gazing up at him and she doesn't seem as visibly upset it's not wonder but she's it's just like she's lost in the moment you know mm-hmm. what i mean whereas in the moonlight clip she looks like she is fully in her brain thinking about mm-hmm. the ramifications or her fears or you know d- d- her brain is going haywire um we yeah. should also mention though that at basildon park there is like a doorway and there are some windows that kind of resemble what we see on the right of the frame which do I just need to go to Basildon Park at the weekend? You might, you might need to go to Basildon Park. We might, we might send you and Veg on a little, like, a little field trip. <laughs> so what you will have heard in maybe the previous discussion that we just had, but if you go back to our remarkable shade of blue emergency mm-hmm. reaction, you will hear that Veg and I were joking with each other because back at Tadum, you and Beans kind of thought it was more of an outdoor scene yeah. when, when you got the still. Yeah. And I was like, I think it's the green room at Basildon. I think they're inside. I think you can see next to Colin that there's green wallpaper and like a window frame or something thing yeah. I was like I think they're inside and I think it's looking out into the gardens and then obviously when we got the most recent clip bless me should be like for fuck's sake you two <laughs> but when we got that clip it's so evidently outside right yeah. it's so evidently not in mm-hmm. a building you can see right and so it was like the whole scene was outside all along yeah but when we were looking back at the stone today yeah we lightened the picture to try to see if we could find where Penelope is standing at Basildon yes. and we both immediately messaged each other <laughs> it's like the same time but then Ob's made an observation that sent us spiraling into the <laughs> afterlife. I realized that we're looking, I think, at two different moments altogether. Mm-hmm. I think obviously they're from the same evening. Yeah. But I think we've got the order completely wrong because yeah. if you look in the Tudum still, if you lighten the Tudum still, it doesn't match. Because where I've always said, I think you can see wallpaper next to Colin, in the clips that we got the other day, that is a stone doorway. It, it hasn't got paper, it isn't green. Lecky will make a diagram, I'm sure. It's very clearly different, right, Lec? Yeah, and I will say that one of the YouTube videos I was looking at, I was looking at through a window and I was like, oh, you can kind of see like a hedge and like uh, a little bit of stone Mm -hmm. behind it. And when it panned away from the window, whoever was filming, I realized it was in the green room, which is the the room that you were talking about. It it went to the ceiling, that distinct pattern ceiling. (laughs) I was like, oh, fuck, they're in the green room. When you were in the YouTube video for looking at Basildon. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, well, maybe they're standing in front of this. This is before you realize that maybe this scene takes place before. But the moment, the moment said that she didn't think they were the, in the same location. I was like, oh my God, it's before. The moonlight still is before. And it it makes sense because mm-hmm. she looks so much more put together. Okay, so let's set the scene for you, right? Let's continue, because I know this is a very visual discussion that we're having and we're a podcast. So it's, yeah. just bear with us. Yeah. So what we think actually happens is that the Tudum still comes before the clip that we saw. So originally we thought he's moving into her and then he moves, leans down, they have the Tudum moment where they're connected, right? Yeah. I think it's the other way around. I think they're inside, maybe a ball, maybe a house. I don't quite know. Even Mm -hmm. if it is filmed at Basildon, Basildon doesn't have to be Penelope's house. It could be doubling as a different location. We've always said this. I think what happens is they're inside at the Tudum still and they have this very supercharged moment where he's leaning down to her. She's looking up at him. Kind of like that gaze that we saw during the lessons where she's, for a second, she's lost in that moment with him. Yeah. She's gazing up at him. Either he nearly kisses her or they do kiss. Maybe this is actually a kiss. They could also be standing in a doorway. I just want to add. Yeah, so I think they're inside Lecky. Right. Because if you look at the dum still, yeah. you can see this greenery. And it makes sense. It makes sense this. Mm-hmm. I think they're standing in a doorway. I think maybe he's like backed her out the near an exit. He leans right down into her. Yeah. They have the to dum still moment where she's gazing at him. And then something happens. She yep. freaks. Yeah, I agree. She runs. Yeah. And she bolts straight out the doorway because she's yeah. by the door. She runs yeah. straight out the doorway into yeah. the gardens. And that's when she gets visibly upset. Mm-hmm. Then moves into the moment we saw in the clip where yeah. she's turning at him almost in tears and he is following her and he's chasing 
chasing after her. I don't think this is a moment where he is then going to walk in and lean to her mm -hmm. in the way that we thought. Yeah. I think that they had the moment and that is what is so deeply upset her. And yeah, potentially then what we see behind Penelope on the right in the clip is maybe one of the windows on the property if she runs somewhere else. If It's, it's hard to say for sure. We thought that it was the same moment and I don't think it is the same moment. You know, it's hilarious. It almost makes more sense for her mm -hmm. to be so much more collected and then have this freak out if something yeah. happened and she runs from him as opposed to her freaking out and then calming down. Yeah. She looked upset. Yeah. And that makes more sense that she had been in that moment and then broke out of it. And we saw it in the lesson scene. They were in a moment. They were gazing at each other. She was lost in his eyes. She caught herself and that devolved into a comedic moment of, oh my God, we're so flustered. Right. Whereas I think this is a super intense moment. I think maybe Colin has initiated this super tense moment. Yeah. And she pulls herself out of it and is distraught about it. And I think during this episode, I speculated that maybe they they don't kiss, that Colin backs off. Mm -hmm. I think there is a potential that they do kiss. Or at the very least, I feel like this changes my perception of how episode three plays out. I think he still uh -huh. will be pursuing her, but she will be fighting back a lot more. Mm -hmm. But I still think there is an opportunity for scenes like the Barclay Square scene because she's just so in love with him that she, if yeah. he's so charming, she wouldn't be able to resist dancing with him if he asked. In spite of herself. Yeah, but I think that if Colin tries to kiss her in episode two, then in episode three, we definitely get unhinged chaos Colin trying to oh, like yeah. pull her aside at balls to kiss her. Mm -hmm. But it's surprising to me because initially I thought that the lessons would continue in episode three, but I feel mm -hmm. like if he tries to kiss her in episode two, I think the lessons end in episode two. Yeah, she's like, I'm not doing this anymore. Uh, episode three is the pursuit and Penelope fighting against Colin, trying to, mm -hmm. to stick to her plan. And then episode four is eventually her giving in and then also that lady whistle down reveal is what I'm thinking. It's like the mini crescendo. Yeah, this kind of has made me reimagine what episode three looks like. But I, I almost think like they might kiss in episode two now, contrary to what I said earlier in the episode today. <laughs> because if you split the order of these scenes, it, it just makes more sense for them to maybe have that moment. Because like, I feel like would an almost kiss make Penelope run? Maybe. A mm -hmm. kiss definitely might. Or if he says something to her afterwards. Yeah. That he like shatters it because yeah. he's too forthcoming. And this is the thing, we're not saying that like he's going to make her uncomfortable or do something she doesn't want. I think she's going to be in that moment with him right. and then catch herself and realize and be like, yeah. I don't understand this at all because yeah. I, I've been trying so hard for this not to be yeah. me falling for you again. I do still think that this could tie into her potentially publishing about what he said at the Featherington Ball earlier mm -hmm. or Colin finding that out in this episode that propels him to make this realization and to try to yeah. kiss her or admit that maybe after all he would want to court her. Yeah. yeah. And I think that would also prompt Penelope to realize that she's scared of that coming to fruition, that she can trust in that dream coming true. If we think, and we struggle with the timeline, so for a second, like just forget things like Osterley because yeah. that's not really relevant at the moment. So if we're saying that you have, maybe someone has seen them together and been like, you two are hanging out. It just gets brought up. Oh, for some reason, Penelope feels like she has to write about it and make a comment. Yeah. She says something like, don't worry guys, as you all know, he already said that he'd never want to call Penelope, so it's not an issue. Yeah. He wakes up, is downstairs in his little unicorn outfit reads it is very very upset spends the mm -hmm. day being conf and i think he's gonna be like confused as to why he's so upset as well and like processing that yeah. and then be a ball whether it's at her house he goes over confronts her or like i don't i didn't mean it i didn't mean it and she's like of course you meant it and i think he says something that is so romantically charged mm -hmm. that she gets caught up in that yeah they have the moment that we saw in the still and then she breaks she catches herself breaks out of it and mm -hmm. she runs and the moment in the garden where he's chasing her is her being like you said you'd never want this he's confused and he's charged and that causes him to be like this I, I do still think they could have a moment in one of the lessons that maybe prompts penelope to publish that to kind of like remind herself and colin and everybody else that to remind herself yeah because she keeps getting caught up in yeah. it because she mm -hmm. loves him, right? Yeah. The lessons, she got caught up in it mm -hmm. because it's just the truth of how she feels about him. But yeah. the practical side of her, and there is a very practical side to Penelope where she's like, this isn't a thing because I've just spent yeah. so long. Yeah, moving past it. And reevaluating who you are in my life. And now just at that moment that I've done this, you've gone the other way. But that's how I think it is. Yeah. And I don't know, in all honesty, how that scene ends up because she's so upset. Yeah. And from the clues we kind of received, they're just some little mini <laughs> mini crumbs. It seems like this could be a, something they shot at Basildon Park. And they were there in block one in July. They were filming there. So yes, very this could be potentially outside of Penelope's house. Yeah. In terms of like how we're thinking about how the scene plays out, about how he maybe comes to see her, especially because mm -hmm. this we think now think this isn't a ball. I feel like it makes 
makes sense to be Penelope's house. I think it makes sense as well, just to wrap this up, that if they're having the confrontation about what he said in the past, yeah. let this go kind of thing. Like, let that part of our story go because I'm trying so hard to move past that myself because I keep getting caught up in it. If this kind of confrontation happens in the exact same place that 208 happened. Yeah. I was going to say, also, we didn't have time in the episode, but Kat Quinn released some great videos about Penelope's hair and how Mm -hmm. having it down like that, it was meant to convey sensuality, but also distress. So I Mm -hmm. feel like it just fits this like intimate moment perfectly where they finally have the sensual moment. Colin sees her in this romantic, sexually charged way. They have yeah. this moment she runs off she's distressed but it's still this private intimate moment between them absolutely and lest we forget window pen obviously fits into this i think mm-hmm. window pen maybe before maybe runs at a similar timeline as unicolin maybe a little bit later in the day but yeah. she is upset because she's had to post that yeah i agree i feel like yeah that's her processing i don't know i feel like it's just going to be like you know both of them kind of in emotional turmoil like intercut those two scenes together oh it's look at the timeline again but if we're thinking that unicolin and this happens at the end of the episode so we've just had an episode where they've got really really close yeah penelope forces distance between them with mm-hmm. the whistle down and yeah. then we have this tension in the episode where they don't see each other throughout the day yeah. and they're both in their own ways getting more upset or caught up in their emotions and then it culminates at the end of the episode in this explosive confrontation this also kind of supports my idea that there might be a montage earlier in the episode to show yeah. like the passage of time to, like get us through it quite quickly yeah yeah and and also show them becoming closer really quickly instead of drawing mm-hmm. that out over multiple episodes we just see multiple yeah. quick beats quick little scenes that show them becoming closer and having more moments and becoming more flustered until it reaches a point where Colin is starting to feel something and Penelope is scared that she's not able to stop feeling something because she's got caught up in it just spending yeah. time with him as a friend but obviously it's always been more than that for her yeah. but it's that kind of rise 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 and mm-hmm. Penelope goes no yeah and is the one to kind of yeah chop the axe and not to cut off their relationship but to be like back in our boxes stick to the plan she spent months coming up with this plan she's not Mm going to give it up so easily and she doesn't know that she can trust Colin because it hurts to believe it yeah again and to fall down into the same rabbit hole Mm -hmm. a week could be completely wrong (laughs) all we're hoping is that this scene gets released next week because (laughs) we cannot bear it but the thing is earlier in this episode I also speculated that if they don't kiss I think we're going to get this scene on Valentine's Day but now Mm -hmm. I think there is a potential that they might kiss and also even if they don't kiss I don't know I wonder if they might not show the scene in its entirety now just because it seems like such a turning point in the relationship it could be the confrontation similar to the one they the, the clip they released of Cantony in episode one yes yes yeah I mean in episode one pollen moment might make more sense than showing more of this clip which is the planned failing do you know what I mean now that I think about it. The plan splintering. That's interesting, you know. Compare Simon and Penelope, right? Simon has a plan with Daphne. Penelope has a plan with Colin. End of episode two could be the way Simon reminded himself of why he couldn't be with Daphne. Well, Daphne also reminds him. I was just watching that scene. Hold on, let me look up the, the dialogue. It's that painful reminder of the conflict that no matter how we feel, no matter what's progressed between us in this past episode where we've gotten closer, this is a reminder of why it cannot be in a comparable way to if this is the culmination of episode two where Penelope is like, this is why we cannot be because you said this and you don't feel this. It's not that she's holding it against him being like, you said something nasty about me. I'm never going to forgive you. It's it's like, Colin, wake up. You don't want this. You're caught up in this moment, even though he does actually want it. Yeah. And it's also Daphne kind of reminding Simon of what she wants. And Simon thinks, oh, I can't give that to her because she says, this is about a life, your grace, my life. I must finally take charge of it. I cannot afford to do otherwise so I shall not have this go wrong. I feel like there's just such the parallels to Penelope who has this plan and who feels like she needs to commit to it so she doesn't get her heart broken are just kind of glaring. I mean obviously they're different but in terms of like the story beats it's kind of similar but I was thinking why we might not get this moonlight pollen scene is because from the marketing we've seen so far they've been touching on these courting lessons, Mm -hmm. these confidence boosting lessons so I feel like we might see a what prompted that basically 
them having a confrontation where Colin offers to help her find a husband um, yeah. because I feel like it would make more sense to show that and the lesson we just got the clip of instead of more of this scene where is it seems like the plan has fallen apart. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I feel like you don't want to show too much to audiences. Mm -hmm. And if you're like, oh, the season is going to be about these lessons, you don't want to show the lessons coming to a halt. And I think that this might be the halt, the cessation of the lessons. Like if we get a trailer though, yeah. this scene could be in the trailer, but less yeah. completely, right? Yeah. It could be chopped up. So we, if you imagine quick cuts, like the tension, the running, yeah. the confrontation. Him leaning in for a kiss. Yeah. And then cut. yeah. yeah. Well, Lecky, I mean. Uh, it feels like every day we have a new spiral about something else and our, our, yes. our, our perception of the, the season completely changes. But, but, you know, it's fine. We are grateful for any and all crumbs we perceive. And thank you to the listeners oh who God, commented yeah. about the Featherington ball because, yeah, you gave us a new lead. You sent us spiraling. You gave us so many more ideas. Like so a that perspective. Was very yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Lecky, I think what we're going to do is we're going to sign off here. Thank you for listening to this very odd episode. It's going to be a mini episode. So later this weekend, it might be Saturday, it might be Sunday, depending on when we've got time. But we're going to release our the rest of the episode that we recorded the other day. So the rest of our Q&A as we look forward to Valentine's Day. Yeah. For the lack of a better term, topiary truthers, please weigh in whether or not you think that the to doom still comes before the clip we just received or vice versa. We'd love to get your opinion. Because as always, we're nothing but clowns. And yeah. I'm sure that like we'll change our minds a thousand times <laughs> uh, well my darling clown lucky in the meantime before we clown again this weekend where can everyone <laughs> find us you can find us at whatabarb pod on instagram and tiktok and you can also find us on youtube where we have lovely collages and lovely subtitles and we're also on podcast platforms i mean like i feel like if you're listening to our podcast you know we're on podcast platforms what of the youtube listeners what of them <laughs> but if you happen to be on youtube and don't know that you're listening to a podcast we're a podcast you can find us on podcast <laughs> platforms but if you also like watching on youtube i get it beans's collages are amazing uh -huh. do both do both <laughs> thank you ever so much and beans i'm gonna resurrect you and she's not i always act like she's dead and she's never <laughs> she's, is. she's not dead she's just not here get out of bed beans because i know <laughs> that you probably with a biscuit and see us out <laughs> That's a violin. Do 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 do. Do 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 do